Well, thank you so much for that uh, introduction, and thank you for inviting me to the Oslo Freedom Forum. You have asked me to comment on the dilemmas involved in doing business in an environment that is less than free. Let me start by emphasizing the importance of business for achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The business sector is, of course, important as a funder and supporter of development policies and projects. But doing business actually has a far greater impact than aid. If we all agree on this description of reality, it follows that it is vital that the business that is done is good business in every sense of the word. Responsible business conduct is the expression used by the OECD. And I'm glad to say that as we speak, ministers from the OECD are meeting in Paris where they will launch a new due diligence guidance for responsible business conduct. I hope and believe this will be an important tool for helping the business sector to promote respect for human rights in accordance with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. These principles are included in the OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises. In case anyone might be thinking that the OECD guidelines only apply to the rich part of the world, it is worth pointing out that 90% of world trade must be in compliance with the guidelines, 90%. The Norwegian government expects Norwegian companies operating abroad to respect local laws and regulations and to be familiar with and apply the OECD guidelines and the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. Norwegian companies have a good reputation internationally. Your event here today confirms the impression I have, ha I have that younger generations are increasingly concerned about human rights. Moreover, a recent survey found that companies give priority to responsible business practices because this motivates their employees and subcontractors. In the same way as we now recognize the importance of having common goals for sustainable development, we're also beginning to realize that human rights are not lofty ideals. Rather, promoting human rights is a matter of understanding and overcoming very practical challenges. That is why Norway pushed for the development and adoption of the UN guiding principles, and why we still play a leading role in the Human Rights Council on this issue. The principles are highly practical. Some of the challenges that need to be overcome are broad in nature. For example, ensuring decent pay for decent work preventing the loss of common resources through corruption and theft, ensuring that women are not prevented from taking part in the economy and from con contributing to the welfare of their families and societies, making sure children are not exploited or prevented from going to school or receiving health care, ensuring access to remedy for victims of human rights abuses and building an open and transparent business environment. Easier said than done, I guess. Other challenges are more specific. For example, ensuring that human rights defenders are not silenced or prevented, from, or prevented from engaging in lawful activities. Making sure that indigenous people, peoples are heard in business processes that concern them. And taking care that companies do not discriminate or condone intolerance against uh, LGBTI representatives or other vulnerable groups. Human rights are obligations that states have to their citizens. States have a responsibility to promote and protect these rights. No state can say that the job is done. And many states are failing badly in this area. Even in countries where citizens are denied their rights and freedoms, it is, it is the responsibility of business to respect human rights. Companies must ensure that they do no, har do no harm. But it doesn't stop there. Good business is also a matter of ensuring that companies do good wherever they can. In other words, business choices and decisions must take into account the local community and the environment, not just the financial bottom line. The Norwegian government has recently taken steps to ensure that Norwegian policies and practices are coherent. Respect for human rights and development is not the responsibility of business alone. We must do our utmost to ensure that we understand the dilemmas that arise from conflicting interests. For example, Norwegian trade practices may affect development priorities. It is sometimes argued that foreign policy interests are in conflict with responsible business conduct. Improved understanding of policy coherence will enable us 
to make better decisions, both in the private sector and in the state sector. The key here is due diligence. Financial due diligence is at the heart of business. Environmental impact analysis and diligence has become a part of this. Human rights due diligence is equally important. If businesses shall succeed, not only today, but also tomorrow and into the future. As I mentioned at the outset, I hope the new OECD guidance can be a useful tool for all business actors in all markets, so that due diligence is carried out across the board for the benefit of people and planet, as well as for profit. Thank you.